how far would you go to make your child successful? What about changing the genetics of your unborn baby to make them smarter or taller or maybe even better looking? Turns out one in three Americans are open to the idea, according to a new study. Let's not forget, lots of parents undergoing IVF already screen their unborn embryos for diseases. So is this really that far off? So here's the question. Would you genetically modify your child and what would you change if you could? Tori, you look very... Um, um, yeah, so my mother, I know you guys know this, is handicapped with a genetic disease, okay? Mm -hmm. It's called Gaucher's. A lot of Ashkenazi Jews have it. And it's a homogeneous recessive gene, which is real nerdy for saying I can get it from parents, right? There was no way I was going to ever have a child, an embryo, whatever we have, that wasn't genetically tested for Gaucher's. And mm -hmm. there was no way I, at that point with my husband, felt comfortable knowing if it was going to be a hard yes knowing if we would keep the, such thing, right? Like uh, what, what that would mean. Genetic, genetic testing for me means life-saving medicine. So it's very different from what you guys see it. I don't see it as much as like a blue-eyed, blonde-haired baby. I see it as like, will this child have horrendous birth defects, cystic fibrosis with other things that can't be saved? Will they suffer? Will they suffer? And when you have that ability, I don't think that's wrong, but it's ethically questionable because it leads to these slippery well, slope I questions. Think, I think, and first of all, I, I think I speak for the panel when I say thank you for being so honest about like just your family's background. And yeah. A lot of people should get tested for that. I think what happens, and, and I've heard this from people that have had uh, you know, had children and had to go in to get, to get some kind of you know plastic surgery to kind of give them their body back what happens is the doctor ethically or not will go well Erica while you're in here are you gonna leave that chin like that are you gonna leave your arms you can right there's that. that slope and yeah. so that's what's going to happen with your kid they're gonna say he's he or she is screening for gauchets you're good there while we're in there do you want your kid to be 6'2 and you're like while we're in there do you want your kid to have perfect teeth while we're in there and is that playing God? And yeah. Absolutely it is. I, well, but you could say the Gaucher's disease okay, thing as well. Exactly. Yeah, no, no, no. And I, is that I'm line, with Tori. I do think that, and I, I shudder to think about the like plastic surgery thing because it feels very different to me as well. Like the truth is the percentage of you and your husband creating a child who had that particular disease would have been low because he doesn't share that exactly. same it's like ancestry. Exactly, very low, exactly. My husband and I don't share the same ancestry, but we do have chronic disease diseases and illness that run in other, you know, within the families separate. Sure. So when we did genetic testing, because we've done this, um, all of those things came up and there would be nothing that we would eventually have a child to, you know, that would carry any of those things. Sure. That being said, I think in most situations when we're bringing up IVF, like we're on that journey now, most people who are doing IVF are not looking for the perfect child. Whatever child, healthy, they just want a baby. Yeah, yeah. live birth they can get is really all they're looking for. When you're talking about a genetically enhanced child, I think that that really lends itself more to people who might be in those situations where, you know what, I have some added money because let me be clear, it is not cheap to do IVF. It is not cheap to have fertility issues. Most people cannot afford it. This is the first year that we're even having conversations about health plans covering genetic testing or covering IVF and fertility treatments, period. So maybe this is a conversation in the next 20, 30 years. You but right now, I feel like the accessibility needs to be the conversation, not about the genetics of having the perfect child. If the well college said. admission scandal well showed said. us anything is that wealthy people will compete. And once one rich couple comes out with a perfect kid, uh, yeah, clock's ticking for. But well, I think that, that, that'll be a different group of people, though. I hope that'll be an anomaly. Can was the college admissions an anomaly? How no. many hundreds of people were involved in that? That's a that's an interesting point. We'll be right back.